just right there on the down right here. All right. <laughs> My name is Tyler Hicks, and I am a brand ambassador for Old Town Canoe and Kayak. Today I'm out at my favorite little local lake, and I'm going to chase a variety of species today. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what my most favorite accessory, I guess most important accessory is to me, and that is my fish finder. And whether you're buying your first fish finder or upgrading your existing one, there's a myriad of features that you have to sort through to determine which is best uh, suited for you that you're gonna need on your fish finder. And it can be a little bit overwhelming between sonar, down imaging, side imaging, 360 imaging, live imaging, live sonar, and the list goes on and on. So it can be a bit intimidating. So today I'm gonna go over um, some of the features of fish finders and what type of fisheries they're best suited for, and you can make that determination from there about what fish finder is best for you. If I can get this fish in the boat. This is a kokanee salmon. Got him. Nice. Okay, so that's a landlocked sockeye salmon, we call them kokanee. So one of the most basic features of any fish finder is going to be sonar. And sonar is a signal that is broadcast in a cone shape outward from your transducer. And it's one of the best ways to locate fish because as that cone goes outwards, of course it covers more and more area. This allows you to quickly scan uh, a very large area, especially if you're moving, and to determine where fish are holding and determine at what depth they're holding. So for example, here on my Hummingbird Helix, this is a Helix 7 Mega, down imaging, side imaging, and sonar, and GPS. You can see these two marks here. These are fish. The very typical mark of a fish is this uh, arch right here. That's what fish will look like. Uh, and that's because as they enter the cone, they are further away from the kayak. As they get closer to the cone, as you go over the top of them, the distance between the transducer and the fish is uh, closer. And then as you pass over them, of course, you're getting further away. So that's what creates the characteristic arch. This line here is my downrigger ball. And what's really interesting is um, if you fish in freshwater systems, um, legs will stratify in the summertime and you can actually push up the sensitivity and that will reveal this stratification right here. So this is the cold dense water down on the bottom of the lake and this is the warmer water sitting on top of it. Now traditional sonar, sometimes you'll hear it referred to as 2D or chirp or something else depending on the manufacturer, is very useful for pretty much any angler out there because like I said it allows you to quickly locate fish because of that cone. Now in shallow water because the cone will be narrower it's more difficult to locate fish but as you move out into deeper water that cone is going to get wider and wider and wider and the width of that cone will depend on the frequency. Now transducers come in a variety of frequencies and most modern day fish finders will alternate between a low and a high frequency so that with higher frequencies you get a broader cone which is better performance in shallow water and with a narrower cone you get better penetration at depth uh, to locate fish that are deeper. And that tends to work best for most anglers, but you can tinker with those uh, settings to customize to your specific fisheries. Another thing that sonar will allow you to do is to identify structure, and it will do that in a couple of ways. One, you'll be able to see the topography uh, of the benthic structure, that is the structure at the bottom of the lake. You'll be able to see that on the fish finder, and the harder or darker the return is, that means the harder the surface is. And that will depend on whatever color spectrum you're using. And this example here, where I'm using the sort of the red to green, red is a harder surface. Um, when it flexes off that, it's a very hard surface whereas uh, the blues and greens are very soft surface. So vegetation would give me a, and mud would give me a soft green reflection and the well, things like rock and gravel are gonna give me that, that uh, hard red reflection. Oop, there's fish. 
Now, for someone like me who spends a lot of their time uh, trolling in the Pacific Northwest for trout and salmon and walleye, uh, I spend all, most of my time in open water away from structure, and sonar is pretty much what I rely on 99.9% .9 of the time. And it meets all my needs. I mean, one of the most basic things that sonar will provide you is the depth that you're fishing in, and it will identify fish, it will give you the temperature. Those are all really valuable and important things for someone who fishes in open water. So if you're someone <laughs> if you're someone who uh, spends most of their time trolling or fishing in open water, targeting fish that are suspended well above the bottom, who aren't tightly associated with structure, then sonar might meet all of your needs. The big rainbow trout. Let's see if we can just do a quick release here. I'll get my hands wet. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> that's that's an even easier release. Okay. Oh, there's fish there. <laughs> Just got this one set set up. Still there. All right. Now before I move on to imaging, there's another feature that is optional and very useful to a large majority of anglers, and that is GPS. So f GPS for me is almost essential because I do a lot of trolling and my troll speed is pretty important in terms of success out on the water. And with GPS, I would get a live update of my troll speed at all times on my fish finder, which is extremely useful. But beyond that, also what GPS will give you is the ability to mark locations and save locations on a map on your fish finder unit. So if you find an area that's holding fish, you can mark that point and you can come back to it. Additionally, most fish finders will come with some sort of base map or you can buy a chip and install it into your fish finder that will give you detailed bathymetric depth maps of your favorite lakes or coastal areas that you fish. And a lot of modern fish finder units also will allow you to create custom maps while you're out on the water. You can use a feature like Auto Chart Live on my hummingbird here, which allows me to create my own custom maps for the bodies of water that I fish, especially those that may not have uh, depth maps available on chips. Additionally, I can improve the maps of the lakes that I fish as well. So it really provides you a lot of information and it's a very worthwhile upgrade. Let's see if we can get this fish in the net. Another salmon. There we go, got him. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch up from open water trolling for trout and salmon to shore fishing and structure fishing for largemouth bass. I think this is where the imaging options really start to shine. Because imaging, unlike traditional sonar, which produces a cone, which then flattens out all of that data, it makes it a little more difficult to interpret what's going on, especially when fish and structure are integrated like they often are because fish are associating with structure. With imaging, it's actually taking very small linear slices outward from your kayak. It might be downward if it's down imaging, or it might be out to the side if it's side imaging. There's, there we go. Pull the nice bass here off of this scree field. And what the imaging lets me see, it lets me really quite easily see how this scree field extends down under the water and where it meets the bottom. I can make out individual boulders on the down imaging and I can also make out individual fish as well. Like this largemouth bass. Ooh, come back here, buddy. There we go. 
not too bad a largey. And that's what I really think imaging is best for, is helps you better understand that structure. It's really hard to interpret structure on traditional sonar, but with down imaging, it's a piece of cake. And what down imaging really does is it really makes it easy to target separate. That is separate fish from structure and individual fish from each other. Whereas on sonar, when you get a couple fish, they look like they're stacked on top of each other. It's harder to interpret. Beautiful fish. Let's get that guy back in the water. There you go. So here you can see uh, the fish I just released. He's headed down. You can see some other fish suspended. You can see the boulders here coming down, meeting the flat, rocky bottom. But you can really see that structure and individual fish associated with it. They'll just kind of show up like little dashes like this. And uh, those are fish. So you won't get the traditional arch that you would get with uh, sonar. So what I just showed you was using down imaging. That is showing what's directly under the kayak. But there's another form of imaging called side imaging. And this is really useful for people who are casting to structure off to the side or want to identify where fish are holding off to their side. There's fish. Nice. So what I think side imaging does best is it allows you to really quickly locate structure and locate fish because you can look outwards of, of 100 feet on each side of the kayak which is great plus you get a better resolution of structure plus you get the same benefits of target separation of fish and structure that all imaging provides so for example here you can see i'm going down the edge of this scree slope so i've got the rocks come down here and then open water on my right and we look down here we can see you can really see the structure of the boulders here there's a couple of fish holding off the tops of these boulders to my right there's actually still some deep boulders out here and then you can see where they fade away and it gives you the distance right so about 50 feet out to the right there you can see we get that transition from rocky bottom to flat bottom and then over to my left here you can see lots of structure that's probably a log right there and a large fish tucked up underneath it. So you really get good resolution um, on both sides of the boat. So this is open water here, and then once it meets the bottom, you're getting all this detail on the structure. Now, out over deep water, I find imaging, down imaging, to be really not all that useful to me, uh, especially in trolling open water situations. Fish will show up as just small flecks, Whereas side imaging can actually be quite helpful in locating where fish are located. You, know, you can see some fish scattered out further away because it's covering more of the water column. But really, sonar provides much better resolution here. I can see fish much more clearly on the fish finder, and I can locate that thermocline really easily. So I find the sonar to be really much more useful in open water. There's a fish. Doesn't feel like a giant, but take it. So beyond sonar, down imaging, side imaging, and GPS, there are more advanced systems like live imaging and live sonar and 360 imaging. But I'm not going to get into those on this video. Uh, there is an additional consideration you have to make uh, beyond those four basic things I've discussed, and they're just screen size. Um, in general, the larger screen size you go, you're going to need more battery to power your fish finder as you are out on the water for the day or multiple days. And it's a nice little fish, it's healthy looking. But you have to take into consideration too how many of those different features you're going to want to simultaneously use. So if you're going to want to use sonar and GPS or sonar, GPS and down imaging, you know, seven inch screen is probably going to be better. If you're only going to be using one or two at a time, then you can probably get away with a five inch screen. And if you're 
really want to keep it simple and you're just going to run simple sonar or maybe just GPS um, and not have them stacked, then you can go as small as a four inch screen and really save uh, some money and save some space on your kayak as well. All right, guys, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. I'll put links to the Helix 7 that I was using today as well as some other recommended fish finders that are good to start with, depending on the features. All right, I'll see you next time out on the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.